My name is Chris McQuay from Unobtaining Welding on Instagram. We're going to show you how to set up your 255 EXT from Everlast and all the equipment and how to get ready for welding. So when you get everything unboxed, you're going to have four basic components. You're going to have your regulator flow meter combo with a gas line. You'll have your TIG torch. You'll have a box with your TIG torch components, and then you'll have your pedal and your ground clamp. Now, the torch has to be assembled. We'll start off with the collet body. We'll put that in the front of the torch. We just want to hand tighten that. Then we'll insert our collet into the back side. Next is our back cup. We don't want to tighten that all the way. Next is our number six cup. Tighten it onto the front of the collet body. And then we insert the tungsten. And you want to have that out about a quarter of an inch and use the back cap to tighten it. Check to make sure it doesn't move and we're ready to weld. So now that our torch is assembled, let's take our four meter regulator combo and our gas line and let's go back to the bottle and get it hooked up to our new Everlast machine. So once you have yourself an argon bottle and you have it safely secured like this on a freestanding cart with chains or you can chain it to your welding cart, you go ahead and remove the cap. And in order to clean out the threads, we recommend you just give it a quick blast. Then we can hook in our flow meter regulator combo. So this will be the big end. And to tighten this, you can use a crescent wrench, but it is a one and one eighth wrench. You just want it snug, set your flow meter to vertical, of course, for the ball travel. So now we're gonna plug the other end of the regulator flow meter into the back of the machine in this brass fitting. And you wanna make sure you use your three quarter inch wrench to support the fitting on the machine so it doesn't turn. And then snug it up. So now that we have everything hooked up, we should open our bottle all the way, back half a turn. And now we'll go to the front of the machine and we'll start to assemble all the welding components on the front. So we'll start with the ground clamp and we want that to go into the positive terminal. You'll notice that there's a key here, there's a keyway there. We just insert it and give it a twist until it stops. So next we'll hook up the pedal. So this is your amperage control and it works basically just like a gas pedal. When you put your foot down, you get more power. So it also has a keyway and this one on the machine happens to be down at six o'clock. So we just insert the pin connections with the keyway in the bottom. And then there's a collar with threads and you wanna hand tighten those threads till they bottom out. Okay, so we're gonna hook up the torch now. The torch has a keyway just like the ground, but it also has this gas line that we have to hook in. So you insert it into the negative terminal on your welder, and this goes into the gas outlet. And you push it in until you hear it click. Make sure, give it a light tug. Now we're ready to go. So now that we have all of our connections in, let's dive into actually doing some weld setup. So the first thing we wanna do is turn it on the back right hand side of the machine, there's a roll switch. So the first thing we'll do is we'll make sure we select high frequency TIG because we have a pedal. So you press this, toggle through. Now we're on high frequency TIG. We wanna be on normal setup. We are on DC, we're on pedal. You can toggle through these to select your pedal. We don't want any pulse right now. So we have that set up. Now we're going to want to do our selection through this menu. We don't want any downslope. Our minimum amperage at the end is 3 amps. Our post flow we're going to want about 5 seconds. That'll go up more as you get into different materials. Uh, this is our pre-flow. We want about a half a second of pre-flow. So that means that there's a half a second delay between when the gas comes on and the arc actually comes on. 
So this one is the upslope. We don't need that because our pedal gives us that. This is for the 2T and 4T settings. Now we're on welding amps. You can give yourself a little extra. 75 is a pretty good general. That'll give you from 1 16th a little bit of uh, headroom for when you start off. You want a little bit more heat when you start off. And on the downslope, the same thing. We don't need that function when we're using the pedal because we're doing it with the pedal. So now that the machine is set up, we're gonna wanna hook up our ground clamp and we have to hook it up to the surface that is gonna be touching the work we're doing. So if you have a nice steel top, you wanna to hook it to the top. You don't wanna hook it to the leg if the leg is painted. Now that the machine's all set up, we need to talk about material. So we're gonna use some mild steel material for this. This is uh, roughly one eighth of an inch. But we wanna make sure we clean it. You're gonna want some gloves because we use generally acetone or methanol to clean. So just put a little bit on the rag. Wipe your material down to get the grease off of the shear or however they made the, cut the material. If you're working on roll cage tubing, you'll have grease all over it. Okay, so we need to get some filler rod as well. For this, we have ER70S6, which is a mild steel rod. Even though it looks like copper, they just coat it with copper. We want to do the same thing. We want to clean that with a little bit of acetone. This particular rod I have here is 1 16th. You can see when we clean it, all the dirt that comes off, you don't want that in your weld puddle. And then we also have some 332 rod. And the other thing I like to do to make sure we don't poke out any eyes is roughly cut the rod in half. They come in 36 inch lengths. You want to be about 18 inches or so. Hang on to both sides so they don't go flying. Now we're ready to weld. So now that we have it all hooked up, we have our material, our torch is set up. We should talk a little bit about how you hold the torch. I like to hold the torch like this. So between my thumb and then the back cap goes between my first two fingers. And that grip can be extrapolated anywhere along that torch, depending on how you want to hold it. So we'll work a little bit on initiating the arc with the pedal. We'll talk about our tungsten to work distance and gas coverage. And then we'll also show some angle shots and how changing the angle can help. So once we have our torch held, we want to start talking about striking the arc. So obviously we don't want to be touching the plate, but we want to be a little ways away. Get yourself set up before you put your hood down. So you know roughly where you need to be. Get your foot on your pedal and now we'll strike the arc. Okay, so press on the pedal, initiate the arc. You can see how pressing on the pedal gives you more amperage in a bigger puddle. And less gives you a smaller, amp smaller puddle, less amperage. Lift the arc so you get larger, but we want to be nice and close. And do a circle, try to maintain. Okay, so once you've done that a few times and you can maintain your tungsten to work distance or your arc gap, we should work on doing some lines and working on controlling the advancement of the puddle across the plate. Okay, so we'll reinitiate the arc, get a puddle formed, and you want to work on maintaining that puddle at a certain width and just travel along. You want to make sure you carry a puddle. This will be important when we start adding filler. You don't want to get too far ahead of that puddle. Stay nice and close. When you get to the end, let off the pedal slowly and move your torch around at the same time. Avoid a crater. So once you've got yourself a couple of lines, you want to start getting into a whip or a weave to learn about controlling the puddle in that direction. So we'll do some of that now. So initiate your arc. 
get yourself a puddle just work on stepping it forward same thing try to maintain a nice even width keep your tungsten as close as possible without touching then you can swap to a side to side movement just to practice getting used to moving the puddle around So once you've got your beads looking relatively consistent, you can control the heat and you know what the puddle is doing. Uh, let's move on to add some filler. Okay, so now we're gonna start adding filler. We're using a 1 16th ER70S6 mild steel rod. So we wanna try and maintain a roughly 90 degree relationship between the torch and your filler at all times. And we only wanna run a little bit of forehand inclination and inclination is how much I have it tipped in the direction of my travel. So we want to run a little bit, mainly for visibility, but you can see I'm still maintaining that roughly 90 degrees. And then also your filler rod, you can actually add the filler by pushing it through your fingers, or you could just straight dab it. And you could also do lay wire in some joints too, but for this video, we'll focus on finger movement and dabbing. So initiate your arc. Get yourself a puddle, add a little bit of filler to that puddle, and move forward, moving the puddle ahead. You can speed up the process by giving it more amperage, and you can dip faster. And you like to keep your filler rod close to keep the rod preheated so it doesn't freeze your puddle. So when you're trying to dip your filler, you want to get your spacing even, you want to be watching your width, and you have to make sure you're going roughly the right speed. You can see if you change your speed, then the metal actually varies, so your puddle will move around. But then once you get it steady, your edges straighten up, and you want it to be convex. This is just slightly convex, this is more convex like what we want. So once you have your bead consistency, getting better, always improving. You have nice straight edges. You can control the puddle even when there's some heat in your plate. You're gonna to wanna to practice as much as you can. The more practice, the better. You gotta to get to know that puddle. In the next episode, we'll cover some pulse settings and how to minimize your heat input. My name is Chris McQuay with Unobtainium. Weld mean, weld green.